We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. Oh, welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of all elite wrestling. I'm Aubrey Edwards with my best friend, Will Washington. How are you doing today, Will? I'm doing great. Happy 4th. Happy 4th. Yes. Oh, my God. It's weird. Holidays don't really exist in wrestling, right? Like, we're on the road 52 weeks a year. I still have friends that all work 9 to 5s, and they're like, oh, we're off on Monday. I'm like, why? I still have 12 meetings. What are you doing? Well, last year was the the first time I ever had to experience that because I had travel on the 4th of July, right? Yeah. I, I did too. Yeah, I travel on the 4th. And this time I'm traveling home on the 4th. So this is like it's a little bit better. Um, so I at least get the holiday as soon as I get home and get my 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 sleep in. What's your 4th tradition typically look like? Oh, well, I mean, I also did travel on the 4th last year. It's it's completely different. I mean, it's a matter of uh, avoiding fireworks as much as I possibly can because I just like going to bed early. <laughs> And uh, this year, we're doing a big old camping trip. Well, long story short, I'm buying 30,000 clams to seed my beach okay. um, that weekend. So I land from Chicago and then immediately head uh, head down to the Sound. So that's my July 4th. My kids, they're big on fireworks. And I'm like, I am great with fireworks on the 4th. On the 5th, I'm slightly annoyed by them. If I'm still hearing them by the 10th, I'm like that guy in the meme who's just like looking around like calling the cops right i'm not that guy but i want to be that guy on the right around july 10th so but right. otherwise like on the fourth i can be festive i can be all of that well and it's one of those like i live in an old building my walls are always just like rumbling anytime that we're at july 4th just constant rumbling yeah uh, man i i have hit or miss <laughs> about july 4th anyway uh who's our guest today will Aubrey, you'll be quite pleased with who our guest is today because we are joined by the CEO of Shane Taylor Promotions mm. and a self-described father, gamer, and ass kicker. Mm. Rumble, bad man, Rumble. Let's go. He is the one and only mm -hmm. Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor, thanks for being here on mm. AEW Unrestricted. Yes! You see, that's that's what I'm talking about. When you give somebody an intro, they got to feel it. Well, I'm proud mm -hmm. of you. Thank you. Miss Aubrey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm curious what the over-under is on when you end up locking the door in the room you're on. Because before we started this podcast, we were talking about parenting. Mm. Mm. Yes, we were. <laughs> As Real Will signs on and is situation. yelling at a kid. <laughs> yes. It happened. You guys literally missed it, but that that is what happened. It's hey, one of those like we need to stop living in this world where everybody's perfect. Okay, it's real parents out here. Okay, you got to deal with real kids. You got to deal with real situations, right? Yes. Trying to do work, kids coming down the stairs, kids barging in the room. It happens, right? Oh, it's summer vacation too, so like uh, everybody's off on summer break. Yes! It's uh, yes! like uh, you know, I don't get to just record the show in peace anymore. <laughs> now it's work. Don't stop. Work. Don't stop. Work. They, don't stop. But it does but for they them. Want the time. They yeah. want the time. Got to give it to them. Well, I've got to say, so like I've known your work for a very, very long time, but I feel like in the last year, especially with the advent of Collision, it really feels like the AEW audience has really gotten a chance to get to know Shane Taylor and get to experience this iteration of Shane Taylor promotions mm -hmm. because we've seen various other iterations. This is uh, the current incarnation that includes Anthony Agogo, Lee Moriarty. Um, I want to talk about Kind of the, the background of the group for those unaware of what Shane Taylor Promotions is and what it has been in the past. Shane Taylor Promotions is, if you were to think of it in rap group terms, Shane Taylor Promotions is death row. Mm. That's what we get to be. That's what that's who we are. I take people that society or other people in this industry have told you can't be this. We don't see creative plans for you. You you, you'll, you'll never reach these heights. You know, there are, there are people who have this job that you're just not quite qualified to have this job. I take people like that. I take people like Lee Moriarty, who people have said, we don't know how to market him. How do you not know how to market one of the best technical wrestlers on the planet? But because we live in a society where he comes from a two-parent household, he's not a thug, he's not a pimp, he's not, uh, well, we just don't know what to do with him. Wrong. I know what to do with them, right? And I, I've had individuals like this 
throughout my my career, I've been blessed to be able to have people on the side of me like a Bishop Khan, like a Moses, like an O'Shea Edwards, like a Ron Hunt, people who have stood next to me in these foxholes and are ready to go to war with me when we go out to the ring. But more importantly, they have the similar mindset and have similar goals for how we represent ourselves outside of the ring. And to me, when you bring all of that into a combat sports area, that's what you get with Shane Taylor Promotions. I uh, I also wanted to bring up Anthony Agogo because this was mm. something and like Anthony's phenomenal. Like I love him as a person. And then it's, it's hard because wrestling still kind of follows that like, oh, it's a fake sport. It's like, it's not like we all walk away with bumps and bruises and whatnot. Right. But like mm-hmm. Anthony is a legit athlete, a Olympic gold medalist. So when he ended up with you guys, it just made all the sense in the world to me. Mm-hmm. You guys are all about throwing punches and being scrappy. And then you've got the guy <laughs> on the roster that is the mm-hmm. most about it. Right. And I'm like, the dude's literally at the Olympics commentating this week at boxing. <laughs> How You can't get more legit than that. It's pretty dope. Anybody else from the AEW roster commentating at the Olympics right now? Nope. Don't think think so. so. I don't think so. (laughs) And just to clarify, right before the internet people go crazy, he did win a bronze, not a gold, but nonetheless, Olympic medalist. People sitting in their basement still didn't do that, so screw you guys. (laughs) Listen, don't get me started on these internet people, please. (laughs) Trying to have a nice show. I'm I'm, I'm chilling. I'm zen. Because these internet chumps, man. I, uh, I come from a world where you have to be very careful of the things that you say and the things that you do because there are consequences for the things that you say and the things that you do. Almost immediate consequences, right? Depending on where you're at. And so I don't live in this world that most people seem to be in now where you get to just like run your mouth and talk trash and run down someone's accomplishments while also contributing absolutely nothing to society and being just a complete for lack of a better Asshat. word, like, like uh, thank you, right? You're I'm welcome. trying not to curse, right? Like, I'm trying, like, <laughs> hey, this is AEW like, unrestricted, right? The, uh, the oh, unrestricted oh, part oh, is it's very uh, em- yeah. emphasized here. You're talking to someone, and I, and I'll and I'll read the comments, right? Which you shouldn't do, but I I, I can't help it because a lot of that stuff actually motivates me. Like, I, I kind of need mm. to do it. It keeps me mentally where I need to be. And watch people go, a go go needs to a go go away. It's like, shut up, shut up. You're you're a fucking loser. Stop it. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> Do you think that Stop was it. clever? <laughs> you, you really you really thought you were gonna put this in, and everybody's gonna go. Huh, we like that. Yeah yeah yeah. And they're gonna start seal clapping for your dumbass comment. You know, if a baby face on TV said that, it would bomb. Right. Terribly it's stupid. <laughs> you're talking to someone who, if he wanted to, right, could absolutely just do whatever he wanted to do to you. There's almost nothing you could do about it, right? Except pray to God he was tired that day and <laughs> didn't want to just wipe you across the floor this whole this whole social media world is wild but that's what i love about who we are as a group and who shane taylor is not only as a person but as a character is i am anti all of this i I don't care what you said when you said it how you said it when i find you is when i find you when i catch you is when i catch you and if you said anything about me my guys or i even just think that you might one day we're gonna find you we're gonna beat your ass drape that STP flag over you and we're going to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit more about this this run you've been on as of late. Mm. It's been very interesting watching those who weren't familiar with Shane Taylor and watch you grow on people. And mm-hmm. I, I've watched it happen before my eyes. I have watched people who didn't know exactly what Shane Taylor brought to the dance and then all of a sudden walk away going, oh, okay. All right, I see it. Mm -hmm. The place where I recognized that everybody was kind of all unanimously in one place going, all right, this guy is the real deal, was May 16th, Collision, Will Ospreay. Mm -hmm. That match, walking away from it. You know, a lot of people walk away from Will Ospreay matches and they walk away going, you know, oh, Will Ospreay really, he did his thing there. But like, Mm -hmm. that wasn't the case there. People looked at you and went, all right, this is a guy who you can put in there with a Will Ospreay and they're going to deliver a banger together. Mm -hmm. What was that night like for you? What did you feel kind of that sense of accomplishment that you proved something to people that night? Yes and no. And I know that's a weird thing to say. And first things first, all, all credit to Will Ospreay, 
you know, there's a lot of people who have a lot of taglines in this sport. Uh, but when Will Osprey says he's on another level, he's not lying. That man is really that good. He really is and could very well be the Billy Goat. You're talking Danielson, Osprey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and depending, and even though Osprey won, I, I don't think he quite overtakes Danielson yet. You give him some more time, maybe five years or so. I, I give it five years, and that's a different order, right? But there there is one thing that he said to me prior to going out there that I kind of always say to people. So it was weird being in the other position. And I always tell people, especially ones that I'm close to, go out there and show them who you are. Remind them and, and show them why your name is your name. What Will said to me was, you belong here. And he said, bro, he's like, you Ruff. belong here, bro. And you have. So go show them. And I was like, that that's all as charged up as I get prior to that, that. That's all I need. That's all I need. I was like, all right, bet. And so I've been able to do a lot of cool things and be in the ring with a lot of great talent. And that match with Osprey, that's something that I've always been able to do. And I, I can go at that pace and do those things. And then you and then you struggle, right, with the psychology of the way some people want you to wrestle and some people want you to do your thing. And the way I do things is not the way, you know, a lot of the the legends in, in the past, especially the, the big guys would do things. But this is a new age. And so bringing that athleticism, excuse me, bringing the ability to be able to do those things and work with, with a talent like, like that at his pace. It's one of those things where I, I was proven right and I get to just go, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so when people are like, Oh man, I'm so imp oh we, we, we didn't know why why didn't you think I could? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like what what part of me being here made you think that I was going to be any less than what I told you I could be? I particularly loved that match and being a part of it and seeing both of you up close. And it was one of those things where I've had the opportunity to work with you a couple of times prior to that. Mm -hmm. So when I saw the match graphic and then I saw my name next to the assignment, I'm like, oh, oh this yeah. is going to be a banger. Mm -hmm. And I like that in that amount of time, like it helps because like you're proving it to the fans that you belong. But I think also you're proving it internally that people don't question like, oh, no, we know why Shane's there mm -hmm. because this is going to be a good match. Everyone's going to enjoy it. It's not just Osprey. It's Osprey versus Shane. And that's why this is going to be great. And making to, to go off of what you just said and adding that is so important. It's not just the Will Osprey match. If I'm in there with Danielson, it's not just the Danielson match. It's not just a Shibata match or a Moxley match. You are in there with Shane Taylor. That will be respected. It will be honored. It will be recognized as you are in here with someone who is just as capable, is just as good. And if you slip up even half a second, if you're a half a step too early or a half a step too late, I'm putting you to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's how dangerous I am. That's how dangerous Lee Moriarty is. That's how dangerous Anthony Agogo is. Anybody that rolls with me can absolutely put you out. Yeah. And I, I think we are getting to the point now where the fans, where people backstage are starting to understand that. And, and they're starting to realize that when we walk out there, we're not just talking shit. <laughs> we're, we're, when we tell you we're the baddest fight team in AEW, we are not lying to you. It's simply just going to be a matter of time before we take all the stuff that we want. Much like Shane Taylor's matches, this conversation is absolutely fantastic. And uh, we've got more coming up here on AEW Unrestricted. This is AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey and Will talking to the CEO of Shane Taylor Promotions, mm. Shane Taylor, about him, his his incredible matches he's been put on putting on TV for years in Ring of Honor prior to that, and his amazing crew and so many other things. We were talking about before the break, your match with Osprey and how it was a banger, but you've had a number of matches on TV that I would describe all as bangers. In particular, there was one that you had with Orange Cassidy, mm. the one before it led up to your match at the the Zero Hour at Dynasty and all this. So we talk about Orange being one of the greatest all time, but I feel like Orange Cassidy is also one of like the greatest in AEW. Like he's had an incredible title run and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like again you're coming in and you're almost the underdog in this case, but I, I think people are doubting you. What was that match like, and how is it different? than the one with Osprey. Styles make fights, right? So anytime I go into a fight, 
I try to game plan the best way I can to, to see what is advantageous to me, what I need to try to stay away from. And with a guy like Osprey, he's able to be powerful. He's able to be fast. He's able to be aerial. He can be a technician. So you really can't kind of like bully him around the ring the way that I tried to do with an Orange Cassidy. And that was my game plan against Orange. Use size, use power, use aggressiveness. But Orange, you know, he has the heart. He has, for as relaxed as he appears to be, dude's a dog, right? Like mm-hmm. he, he has that scrappy fire in him and you got to respect it. I tried to take his head off when he put his hands in his pockets. I, I really did because that's oh, it's disrespectful. But that's another case to where the fans love an individual and then they're getting to know another one. And I needed to impress upon them that Orange Cassidy is not just out here with some dude. He's not just out here with a local guy. He's not just out here with somebody that, you know, you're just going to look past and get to your match next week. No, he is in, he's in danger right now. Your boy is in trouble, (laughs) you know, and that's really what I wanted to impress upon people. But also, again, it's another one of those situations where I need you to know that I can compete with the best. If people look at the competition that I have had since walking in, that Lee Moriarty has had since walking in, it would almost be like this. Imagine a, imagine a boxer getting to the biggest stage, getting to like, we'll, we'll say like an HBO pay-per-view, right? And your first five, six matches are Tyson, Ali, Ken Norton, Larry Holmes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Lennox Lewis, you know, Razor Ruddick, you you can go down the line, right? Marciano, like, this is the level of competition that I walked into. This is my introduction to this fan base is fighting all of these people. Mm. For some people, they they would go, oh, well, you didn't beat those guys. Well, you must not be anything. I walked in here against the best and took everybody to the limit. There are not many people. In fact, I don't think there's any people who are talking shit after they fight me. There's a lot of people who could talk shit before. That's kind of what we do. That That's cool. No one's talking shit after. Mm-mm. And to me, that that marks what really happened in that fight. Because there's there's something that my dad always told me. He said, hey, win or lose a fight, you make sure they never want to fight you again. And so that's the attitude that I go in there with. Even if you won, you don't want to do it again. Even if you won, you don't want to run your mouth because we'll do it again and again and again until I win. And then once I beat you, you'll never beat me again. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, you know, I think most of the the hardcore wrestling fan base really came to know you in your years of Ring of Honor. Mm. But prior to that, you you had been making your way through the indies for years, really going back to the, the mid-2000s. Uh, I wanted to start with uh, your training and, and what made you decide to get into professional wrestling. I was in college playing, playing football, wrestling. And when I left, I had to make a few choices, right? It was, hey, do I want to try to pursue wrestling at the Olympic level. And then I thought to myself, nah, don't love it that much. Like it, you know, love to compete, but being an Olympic wrestler, just like Anthony Agogo is an Olympic boxer, was a commitment and a mindset that I just did not have at that time, right? And I I, I was not about to waste my time nor anybody else's by, by not being able to fully commit to that. And then it was, okay, if I'm not gonna do that, do I just go get a nine to five? into that workforce. And then I thought to myself, nah, never been a nine to five guy. Don't operate in that environment. I'm not someone who has a problem with authority, but I hate shitty leadership. So if I don't see you being the general and being the example that you're telling me to be, it's not going to click. And if you can't beat my ass, you really can't tell me what what to do, right? You're not going to be able to, you need to stop. I just like the picture of Shane in a conference room in a meeting in the middle of like a, like a scrum (laughs) meeting and a nine to five. And he's like, look, like if you can't beat my ass, it ain't happening. (laughs) Listen, it's happened. It's happened. (laughs) I believe it. It was Jerry, do you want to leave this meeting? Uh, Well, uh, I I, I didn't think so. Right. So we can take it outside. Let's let's stay cordial here (laughs) at at any point in time. Right. And like, and I'm not, I am not the baddest dude on the planet. I am sure somewhere there is someone that has my number. The odds of it being you today are low. 
<laughs> right? So let's just, I, I don't think you really want to take that chance. Yeah. So let, let's just keep it easy. But back to what we were saying. So the nine to five thing wasn't going to work, but, but I did tell my dad that I always wanted to be a professional wrestler. And coincidentally, I actually, actually got a kicked out of preschool for wrestling. Oh yeah. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> this was something that my dad always kind of knew was coming. And it's something that just sort of has come to fruition the way my, my life has gone. And so it was just a choice to go, you know what? I don't want to be 50, 60 and look back going, man, I wish I would have gave that a chance. So let's just go for it and let's just do it. But the preschool story, since that seemed to perk your interest. Yes, yes. please. <laughs> I, I I hope our faces got captured there oh, yeah. from <laughs> oh. that story. I was yeah. like, what, excuse me? What, what I like resettled and I was like, okay, let's go oh, into yeah. this. Okay, grab the popcorn. <laughs> we are a very tight knit family, right? East side, Cleveland, o Ohio. We've lost a lot of people. So when it comes to family and protecting each other, we stop at nothing, right? Like you, you don't mess with family. You take care of your people by any means. And that's been instilled in us since day one. So we were in preschool, me and my cousin, Walter, who is actually doing great in Chicago now. Uh, he went to Harvard, he went to Harvard Law School, graduated, crushing it. Like, it's absolutely incredible the things that he's done. We are in preschool and there are these kids that are messing with my cousin. And I was like, well, that's not going to happen, right? We're going to shut that down. So we ended up getting a little, you know, preschool scrap. I decided that since the teacher was... MIA that I was going to, you know, put a stamp on this fight. So I climbed up on top of a table and proceeded to hands up macho man elbow this kid, point of the L elbow right to the chest, boom. Oh no. And uh <laughs> it was at that point the teacher came back in, saw what was happening and immediately called my dad. And the entire time I'm I'm talking trash, right? And she's telling me to shut up. I'm talking back like, "Nah, it ain't happening cuz this 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 this." <laughs> So she ended up like taping my mouth and which didn't go over well once my dad got there. And yeah, so he was basically like, take the tape off my son's mouth now. I'm going to take them out of this school and then I'm going to go take them to get ice cream because they did exactly what we told them to do. <sighs> Whatever else happened with the parents of the kids that, you know, we elbowed, I don't know, but I never heard about it again. So it was done from that point for me. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the story about how I got kicked out of preschool for us. I think I need a breather after that story. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a wild boy for a minute, man. Y'all, 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 y'all just getting to see it. But you are born for this. You're oh, absolutely yeah. born for this. <laughs> but and we've got you, man. This, this is who I am. We've got more with Shane Taylor right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Will Washington, it's Aubrey Edwards, it's Shane Taylor, uniting over common bullshit as we were talking about in yeah, the you break. Damn, you damn right. Yes. yes. <laughs> damn we were man. talking about um, your upbringing, and of course we talked Speaking about the preschool story bullshit. before the break. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, wanted to get into the, the training story. Uh, am I correct here? You were trained by Ray Rowe? Yes. I was trained yes. by Ray Rowe and Jerry, and Jerry Myers. I actually wrestled Ray Rowe in high school. I was sick that day, so he won, you know, and all that shit. But <laughs> it's the only reason. Not, <laughs> not 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 that he was an incredible wrestler and, and just won, but no, the fact that I, I, I was sick, pretty sure I was injured too. He won, you know, and it's cool. But I, it's not something that I still think about as a 38-year-old man. <laughs> it's the loss that I took tw 20 years ago. But it's cool, you know. Um, but no, Ray is one of the most amazing people that I've ever met, not just in this industry, but simply in life. He is someone that if you had to go to war, you pick him. Mm -hmm. You pick him every single time without hesitation because he will tell you the things that you need to know, whether you like them or not. He will be honest, but he will always be a man of his word and he will always have your back. And he has helped me make better decisions that I would have made if he wasn't there to guide me. I would have made and reacted to situations throughout my career much differently had he not been there to be that voice of reason and, and kind of steer me where I needed to go. And so for me, coming from that amateur wrestling background, but also having 
the boxing and having the striking, he has all of those things as well. Uh, so for him to be able to guide me and show me and teach me, as well as me find my own way, has helped develop the style in which Shane, Shane Taylor performs today. I like that he's like, oh, yeah, he'll guide you. I'm like, is there a way that you're guided that's not punching people? <laughs> like, <laughs> Not really. <laughs> or he's just telling you how to punch people. <laughs> like, That's really what he's guiding. So, okay, so here's a funny story, right? <laughs> we always argue over who is the more violent brother. Because I've been in more fights, he says it's me. But I try to argue my point that I'm simply just more efficient at ending situations before they become bigger situations. So if I get into five fights, but you get into two major brawls, to me that that your <laughs> level of violence is higher because the, the the destruction, the amount of people who got hurt, the the importance and seriousness of the situation was much bigger. I simply just hit these five dudes, right? That's they're the only <laughs> victims, right? Like that's what it is. Now you go over here, you've now undressed this man verbally to where now him, his boys, three other people, and now somebody else is is, is involved. You get innocent bystanders hurt, someone throws a glass, this person gets hurt. Like you are much more prone to violence than I am. I handled the situation, you let it get out of control. I believe I'm I'm correct. He he argues the point. But it is what it is. You know, he's an English major. So he I've watched this man talk to grown men like their children <laughs> and then look at me like, can you believe he swung? Yes. Yes. I, I can believe he swung. Yes. Had you talked to me like that, I'd have swung and I love you to death. You know what I mean? Like, you can't talk to people like that, bro. I'm like, you should have hit him 10 minutes ago. Like nothing was going to happen. Right. This wasn't going to get better. It wasn't gonna, like you should have just ended the situation, but I tend to be the one that he says is more prone to violence, but I disagree. I mean, the argument's sound. I'm not going to disagree. That, you see, you see the logic. You see right. the logic. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's, that's all I've been trying to say. I mean, I'm no English major, but I see the logic. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dog, the guy was wrong. You could have just told him he was wrong. That's what it is. Cool. End the situation right there. But no, 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 no. It was like, have you learned your lesson? Will we not do this again? I'm like, what? What are you? Do what are you doing? What are you doing? That's that's gonna cause animosity. Like you can't undress a grown man in front of his people, in front of his lady, in front of all these other people. Like it's gonna be a problem, dog. It's gonna be. You should not. Nah, uh -uh. I'm, I'm not doing all that. That's way more destructive to someone's personality, to someone's psyche than just getting hit in the face. That's that's way worse in my opinion. Well, let's talk about the level of violence and how it increased because uh, in 2014, mm. uh, or was it 2015? 2015, I remember correctly, with mm -hmm. uh, with Keith Lee. In Ring of Honor, you mm -hmm. two were known as the Pretty Boy Killers. Yes, sir. You like that name? I, I saw it. <laughs> of course I, it. I, I followed mm -hmm. Ring of Honor pretty much since 2002. So my relationship with Ring of Honor has very much mm -hmm. is near and dear to my heart. So working where I do... Uh, I never take that for granted, oh, yeah. but I always love looking back at the history of Ring of Honor and talking about you two as the pretty boy, uh, pretty boy killers. Mm -hmm. I want to start off with the chemistry you two had as a team mm -hmm. and what made this the right fit for you two to go into being a tag team in Ring of Honor. Keith Lee and I are essentially yin and yang. We have very similar goals to where we want to be in the industry, to who we want to be, not only in our families, but in our communities. And, and sort of be able to both be able to sit on that throne that we've seen great men sit on prior to us. But we have vastly different personalities, as you guys can tell. Keith Lee is a borderline genius. I, I'm, I might not even say borderline. The dude is incredibly intelligent. He's very articulate, very, no very knowledgeable about a lot of things. What we commonly face in this industry is... Stereotypes about what superstars look like, what superstars can be, where you come from, what the prototypical or stereotypical star looks like. And when you think of a champion, when you think of someone who represents this industry to the mainstream audience, a lot of times the image of guys like Keith Lee or the image of guys like myself doesn't come to mind. You have this image of someone needing to, to be... 6'5 and jacked and abs with baby oil and trunks. And for some people, hey, if that's what you like, like that. That's incredible. 
but you can look different and still be a star. Just like in combat sports, all the ripped guys aren't necessarily the best fighters. They're not the, they're not the best champions. It's whoever's got the dog in them the most, whoever is willing to go out there and showcase the skill that can really make it happen. To me, that's what that pretty boy killer name was all about. I actually got it from a buddy named Trip Lee in Ohio who was going by Pretty Boy Killer. And I, I was like, hey, man, can we use that name for, for this tag, tag team? He was like, go right ahead. My, you know, go right, go right ahead. I was like, cool. But that's what that tag team name was all about, killing the image, killing that pretty boy image, killing that stigma and that thought process that these guys aren't what stars can be. These guys aren't what we want our stars to look like. These guys aren't where we need our stars to come from. They don't have the backgrounds that we want our stars to, to have. We wanted to go out there and absolutely destroy any notion of that. And so that name fit us perfectly. And with the way our, our styles in ring and our personalities out of it completely mesh. Like I said, yin and yang, Keith Lee is a highlight reel of athleticism. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've told him I am I formation four yards of carry, bro. Will it be pretty? No. Will we move the chains? Absolutely. Will we score? 100%. Will we dominate the ball in time of possession? Yes. Will the average person will, I, I didn't see 80 points a game. Too bad. Too bad. We won the game. That's what I'm about. Keith Lee wants to send you home, you know, money's worth. You saw every highlight, every death defying thing that you could possibly see. And me, I don't really care about that. <laughs> I just want to get it done. He's amazing tag team partner. He's an amazing friend. He's also helped guide me and, and helped. He, he helped me get into AEW. I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. So he's the man. And I still owe him an ass beating too for uh final battle, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> I love that you're like all business spent five minutes talking about how great this guy is. Then mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, and I still owe him an ass beating. Well, like, like, well, like, like that, that doesn't go away. The, <laughs> you are talking to the fade runner. I, we will fight at any point in time, any loss that I've taken. It, it's simply a matter of, we haven't had the rematch yet. Mm. Anybody who's picked up a victory over me, please don't think we're done because we're not. You know what I mean, it just means we got more Shane Taylor bangers. Oh, that, that, that just means you're going to see me again, dog. You're going to mm -hmm. see me again. Moxie, you're going to see me again. Osprey's going to see me again. Orange Cassidy's going to see me again. Samoa Joe is going to see me again. Keith Lee's, all these cats are going to see me again. You know who's, you know who needs to see me first though? Mark Briscoe. Mm. But we'll get there. We, we got, we got, pl we got pl plenty of time left, but Mark Briscoe. Speaking of Briscoe, as we're talking about your background in Ring of Honor, oh yeah, you said I think once in an interview that Jay Briscoe was your favorite opponent ever in ROH. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that? Why was he your favorite? Jay Briscoe demands a level of respect and a level of energy and a level of fight in you that most people can't bring out of you, and it, it's a level that most people don't even have. But for someone who does have that. To be across from someone who demands that from you. Because anything less than that, and you're getting put down. And he will not hesitate. He he may even like you. The fact that he likes you means that he's going to respect you enough to beat your ass efficiently. Right? Like, he's going to make sure if you didn't come to wrestle, if you didn't come to fight that day, sick, hurt, had an argument with your girl, had an argument with your dude. I don't care if you showed up and you weren't ready to fight that day. Jay Briscoe was going to whoop your ass. Even if you came in ready, he was probably still going to beat your ass. But you, there's no half stepping with Jay Briscoe. And to me, that just made me feel like I was back at home fighting. And it brought a level of comfort. It brought a level of excitement. It brought a level of energy and passion from me that very few people get to bring out of me, but they are my favorite opponents because the matches are so physical and they remind me so much of how I grew, grew up. It, it, it's almost like kindred combat spirits, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so guys like Ray Rowe, guys like Jay Briscoe, guys like, like Samoa Joe bring that energy out of you. 
to be able to be, and because of who he is, right? Because of the fact that he's someone who took what Ring of Honor was supposed to be, and that is the counterculture, the alternate option, a, a group of individuals who this industry told, yeah, you're good, but you're just not good enough. You're not big enough. You're not aesthetically pleasing enough to be able to take and lead that group of individuals for 20 years, make it one of the best places to perform, to give so many opportunities to people like myself and to others to represent that and to be so loyal to those letters and to that company, to be able to stand across the ring from him and fight him and fight that person. It really is like being able to play Jordan in the finals or standing across from Ali in his prime. You know what I mean? It, it's that level of like, okay, here we go. All the work that we put in, everything that we've done until this point is to get this shot and to be able to not have owned, to, uh, to have been in the ring with him two times in singles and multiple times in tag team situations. That was fun. It's always a scrap. You always come out hurt, banged up. You know what I mean? But that's what, that's what you expect and it's what you enjoy about it. Tell me about the last time you saw Jay. The last time I saw Jay, we were all hanging outside. It was final battle, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. I had just completed the tag match with myself, Keith, Swerve, and JD Griffey. And it was actually my, my first time getting to really talk to Tony kind of in that one-on-one -on -one environment since coming into the company. The collection of knowledge that was in that group, the different personalities, and the ability to share a final battle with Jay Briscoe and then be able to just sit down and, and, and talk to him about the match, talk to him and get and pick his brain about things that he would have done differently or, or things that he liked that, that he wanted me to keep doing. He was always someone who I would call and he would always make time for you. Even, even with his crazy schedule, we would sit on the phone and talk for hours about the way we wanted Ring of Honor to be, the way we wanted Ring of Honor to be represented, the way we wanted Ring of Honor to be carried going forward. And I always put a lot of pressure on myself to represent Ring of Honor the way he would have mm -hmm. and to always have it mean what it should mean and to have it always have it have the reverence that it, that it should have and have the importance that it should have. And, and so that is something that I take very seriously. And that's something that um, is going to be the way that I honor Jay Briscoe in my life going forward is to continue to push for Ring of Honor now that it has the most eyes on it that it ever has to be able to be seen in that light the way he would have wanted it to be seen. Hell yeah, man. This was such a great conversation. Just I had so much respect for you mm. already mm. and I didn't know it could be more, but like you've exceeded it, punched a hole through the freaking ceiling. And now it's just like continuing to grow. You're just the fucking man, dude. Like <laughs> I love you so much. And I'm so glad you got to chat with us today. Thank you for having me on anytime. Of course. Of course. Whenever Shane Taylor is on TV, it is must see dynamite every Wednesday on TBS rampage every Friday on TNT Collision on TNT every Saturday. And of course, ROH, you can watch it on Honor Club every Thursday. I am Aubrey Edwards with Will Washington, my best friend. You can listen to this podcast every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms, video episodes on Monday. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Peace. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted.